It's not power that you must focus on. It is your approach to power. It is not your abilities that you must claim. It is your understanding of them that must be. It's not power that you must focus on. It is your approach to power. It is not your abilities that you must claim. It is your understanding of them that must be. It's not power that you must focus on. It is your approach to power. It is not your abilities that you must claim. It is your understanding of them that must be cultivated. Hello, everyone. This is Mystic Lady Z, and I will be presenting to you guys a very special presentation. Um, before we get started, I would like to talk to you guys about a couple of things. And what that is, is this book, um, Napoleon Hill, Thank and Grow Rich book. This book has totally changed my mindset. And before I even read this book, my mindset was in a scarcity mindset. So I don't know what it was that that led me to buying this book. Maybe I have to you know, think about it as I'm doing the presentation. But anyway, the moral to the story is is that at that particular time in my life when I bought this book, I know that I needed to change because, you know, I want it better for myself and my kids, you know, and I wanted to, I had a big dream of, you know, being a life coach at that time. But now I consider myself a law of attraction coach, which I like is still coaching, but yeah, but it's a difference. Because I, I mainly focus on, you know, prosperity, manifestation, and, you know, the universal laws and other, you know, unorthodox um, subjects and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how this particular book changed my life, as well as others. But this particular book, it, it, it went, it really, you know, shifted my consciousness into a new mindset that allowed me to believe that I could do anything that I wanted to do. And that's what I'm doing now. So... I put together this presentation because I wanted to, to give you guys some tools that help me along my journey. And I'm still on my journey and I'm still learning, but I just wanted to make this chart so I could help others. But here we go. This will be my first coaching um, presentation chart. So yeah, please bear with me. Okay, with that said, what we're gonna be discussing at this moment is the results in your life that you currently have. What I need you to do at this moment is to take a look at the results that you have in your life right now. And how you're going to do that is you're going to put yourself in a mental state that would allow you to just sit there and to just think about, you know, the things that's been going on in your life, you know, for the last past couple of weeks up to now. And you're going to take a look and see what has been happening, meaning the type of results that you've been getting in your life. And do y'all actually know how? How are the results happening? How, how is that? How are you getting back that feedback of those results? What are you doing? What are you doing within your life to get those feedbacks, that those results? Because those results are the product of your thinking. Those results are a product of your thinking. 
And if you do not like the results that you're getting, then you're going to have to change your thinking. That's bottom line. You're going to have to change your thinking. All right, you guys, let's dive deeper into results and how they really happen. And the reason why I wanted to um, talk about results and how they really happen, because results are the manifestations of your thinking. And which I said previously is results are a product of your thinking. And to be able to think, that's a skill because a lot of people think that, oh, I'm thinking. No, you're not. You're programmed. You, you are conditioned. Your life has been conditioned based on the programs that you consciously or unconsciously allow to influence you. That's where your results are coming from. The programs, whether it's the TV, the radio, or other people who are to influence you. That's where results are coming from. And based upon the knowledge that we have of ourselves and of our environment and the things that, you know, how how the world is working, you know, when I mean how the world is working, I mean, you know, based upon how, I ain't going to say the laws because that's not what I'm talking about. When I say how the, how the world is working, it's like how things are structured because a lot of people think that they know how things are structured based upon the news and, you know, what we've learned in school, which that's totally wrong. That's that's like a, that's a facade. It's all a facade because it, it, it gives, you know, citizens some type of structure and order, but it's not really how things are run, but we'll get into that a little later in the video, or probably not, probably another video. But the thing is, like I said, with results, the results are the manifestation of your thinking. And your thinking is a product of your program as well. Whatever you allow and program you, that is how results are happening. Now, this is a quote that I found by, quite interesting, and this quote is by Neville, Neville Goddard, Neville Goddard. And it says, we are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. But I put I imagination. But you know, I, because you can, I could be me, I looking outwards, you know, with your eye or magi. A magi is a magician. Yeah. A nation. Nation would be considered your own world, which I say my own dream world. My own dream world is my own nation my own culture, you know, my own creativity. So I imagine nation, which y'all know what imagination means. When you are fully within your own mind and you are allowing your own mind to tell you what is true to you. You're not allowing anybody else's opinion, you know, dictate what you allow yourself to focus on. Once you set that goal, once you set that intention for yourself, that's all you see. That's all you know. And you're not you're not gonna let anybody to detour you from that. But when I seen this quote, I'm like, wow, we are only limited by weakness of attention. We allow ourselves to focus upon so much nonsense throughout this world, and a lot of us don't even know that a lot of it is nothing. It's all entertainment. It's all a distraction. 
It's to keep you busy. Focus on other people's dream world. Why? You can care less about what's going on in your world. Because you're getting ambushed by so many, what I, what frequency vibrations, many thoughts, emotions. We let all these emotions and thoughts just, just fuck our world up. Poverty of imagination. We don't even have our own imagination. We don't. We always fall into the trap of looking at what somebody else got going on in their world. And then with that, then we get ambushed. Like I said earlier, we get ambushed like, you know, we wonder, we look at our life, you know. When we do sit, have a little time to sit with ourselves and look at our life, it's like we're living in a nightmare. It's like we unrecognizable to ourselves because we like we, we know we're so much better than who, what we're being and we, we can live so much grander than what we're living. But it's like, I was having a conversation. This was a while back. I want to share this story with you. I was having a conversation with this person, and the conversation was, what was the conversation? I should have just said it y'all. But anyway, the conversation was about, you know, like, um, organizations, not organizations, but corporations, and, yeah, organizations, corporations, and um, franchises, and whatever. Anyway, it's the, it's the corporation. But the, the purpose of that conversation was, you know, like, with anything within this world, which I call realm, everything first had to be created within the mind, meaning imagination. See, somebody had a dream of creating this certain type of business, and it expanded into a corporation or a franchise or whatever, you know, those entities, because they are entities. Businesses are entities. But anyway, my thing... It's like it, it's uh, oblivious to people, you know, with people dedicating their life to money and other people's dreams. And they're not even aware that the more that they focus on other people's dreams, that the more that they focus on, you know, just monetary things like, you know, I I have dreams of getting, a, you know, a new house and cars and all this other stuff. But that's, that's so, you know, that's so far beyond my mind right now. Because what's, what's going on within me is me getting the school, the schools, the skills and the knowledge and, you know, the proper speaking <laughs> So I could, you know, do this on a regular basis because I love doing this. It's just that sometimes I get caught up in my head and I just start to, you know, mess up within my speech. But anyway, like I was saying, poverty of imagination. A lot of us have poverty of imagination. My imagination, I let it run well. You know, I don't let it run well. I do let it run wild. But then I bring it back towards me and then I, I look at the things that are important to me and right now what's important to me is coaching you know being a law of attraction coach and making things better for me and my family that's what's important to me but when you are, allow other people to control what you do with your time meaning the job and you know tell you what's best for your life meaning programming you like, hey buy this and get that and watch this and all that that's not your life anymore. I call that you've been possessed. You allow this person to influence you to the point that you don't even have a life anymore. That's that your life belongs to him, whoever has begun to possess you now. Yeah. But like I said, with this quote, it really, it really, yeah, intrigued me. We are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. And that is so true. You know, we, we think that when it comes to imagination, that's, that's childlike things. But everybody has an imagination. Whether it's, you know, having a girl of your dream or 
Whatever it may be, everybody have one, but they don't act upon it. Now, that's the difference. Acting upon the imagination and just letting it sit within you and rot. But, moving on. All right, all right, we're back. Hell, we're going to still talk about results. We're going to talk about results, happiness, health, and wealth. But the number one thing is that I want to say before I dive deep up in this thing is, y'all, we have to stay focused and we have to use our imagination to build that world that we want. If we want to have this, you know, spectacular reality, meaning our life experience, we're going to have to do things that we do not want to do. Meaning sit with ourselves, be with ourselves, meditate. You know, I don't know if you're a writer or whatever, however, you know, it is that you do to get in tune with yourself, but you're going to have to do that. But let's get back to the point. Okay. Reason why I brought up happiness, wealth, and health is because these are the particular things that we are wanting. And once these things has been successful, successfully achieved, then it's like we can now relax a little, you know, well, a whole lot, because we don't have to, to work as hard or, you know, do as much as we were normally doing because we had, we at that, that comfort zone that we want to be in because that's that's why everybody do what they're doing. Results always tell the truth. And we're going to go a little bit back into those three letters, which is H, H, and W. Happiness, health, and wealth. And the reason being why I'm going to talk more about that, because, you know, when it comes to those three things, like I previously said, these are the things that people are wanting within their lives that they strive daily to get is that comfort, is that peace of mind to know that they don't have to stress about money, to know that they can freely live the life that they want. This is what people, this is what I say is the American dream. Those three things to make sure, you, you know, you're healthy, you're happy, and you're wealthy. That's what I would consider the American dream for people is to have those three things. Because once you have those three things, then you will be able to live life more comfortable. You know, I ain't going to say comfortable mean easy because a lot of things, a lot of people are comfortable, but they don't mean they have, you know, like a, a easy life because, you know, what they say with uh, too much is given, much is required. To, to, much, to whom much is given, much is required. And, you know, when you start focusing on trying to do something on a, on a bigger and better level, you have a lot of things that tries to creep in and, and throw you off track. Hey, I'm very familiar with that because... I've been trying to do this for like 11 years now, and I'm still at the beginning stage, which that's another video that I'll be sharing with y'all. But uh, yeah, are you getting what you want out of your life? Because if you're not, then it all starts within your mentality. What type of mentality do you have? Because results always tell the truth. And results come from the manifestations of your thinking, your thoughts. And like I said once before, thinking is a skill. We have been programmed to think a certain way. We don't even really know how to think. And the first step, I, I believe, to begin the process of really thinking is knowing yourself. That's when you begin to think. That's when you begin to become aware of so many things 
that you wasn't even aware of within your life first. Then you'll become, you'll start becoming aware of the other things that are surrounding your environment. Then your uh, your awareness start to expand more. Then you'll start finding out things that are happening within the world. But first, everything starts with self, with self, with self love, self awareness. Well, back again. Yep, I cannot stress it enough. Results always tell the truth. I don't care what you're telling yourself, what you're telling the others. Results always tell the truth. By their fruits, you will know them. Results always tell the truth. Now, you can try to play games with yourself all you want. But just look at your results in your life. Look at the results in your life. Boy, I saw, you know, <laughs> I used to be this person, so that's why I can speak on it very well. I used to be scared, afraid to really, like, look at my life. It's like I just used to be just drifting through my life, just, you know, just trying to be this perfect mother, trying to be this perfect girlfriend or wife perfect perfection that was my thing i strive for perfection that's just like with me doing this video now yeah i gotta talk about it you know i'm feeling some type of way about it because i feel like it's not to my best but it's like with me doing it anyway i can look back on it and say yeah i need to fix that and fix that that's what i do and i know i say this a lot but if I don't continuously practice this, then I would never get better at, you know, my speaking. And I don't. I, I'm not going to lie. I do not practice my speaking on a daily basis. I do not. Because I so I be so busy trying to, you know, multitask with the other things that I have going on within my life. But I'm not going to give up on this because this is something that I want to do. But back to the matter at hand. Results always tell you the truth because you are it. You're the one thinking the thoughts and you're the one doing the actions, the activity. Whatever you're doing, meaning mentally, those are the results that you tend to reap physically. Physically, you tend to reap those results because this it, it, it don't work no other way. That's the only way it works. Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth, and the reason why I am so focused on results because results is the thing that is shaping your life. Results is that number one factor that is shaping your life. Results are the manifestations of your thinking. And when I feel like when something is very important, this where repetition comes in. And I am speaking this over and over and over again so that it can go deeper within your subconscious mind. For it to be like, what are the results that I'm getting in my life? What do I want in my life? What am I supposed to be doing? Why am I not doing it? What are the things that I'm focused upon that I know I should stop doing that today? That's why I keep saying results always tell the truth. 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 Whether the good, the bad, the ugly. Results always tell the truth. And the reason why I keep saying this is because, like I said, repetition is the thing that keeps the subconscious mind open 
to that idea. Okay, and the next thing I want to talk about is how do you see yourself? When you look at yourself in the mirror, what is that that what is that self talk? What is that talk? How do you talk to yourself? That's what I'm trying to say. How do you talk to yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror? Or do you even look at yourself in the mirror? Or do, I'm, I'm quite sure everybody talks to themselves, but they probably do that more in a negative way than a positive way because of the programming, you know? It's like when we're talking to, to ourselves, we either talking about somebody or what we don't like about somebody or what we don't like about ourselves rather than talking, you know, positive and uplifting towards ourselves and others. Because however we talk to ourselves, it also reflects what we are manifesting within the external reality. And the external reality is what? Your life experiences. Your internal reality is what? Your thinking. How you see yourself and how you see the world. So you see, you see, this is why I, I know, you know, understanding, you know, how to utilize the law of attraction and all the, the, the universe, universal laws. This is very important because once you understand how to use these things, then life starts to look different. You know, the world starts to look different. The people you interact with start to look different because all that, it, it shapes your mentality, how you see the external world. The external world is the physical world, you know, what you can taste, touch, see, and smell. Now, the internal world is the spiritual world, your thoughts, what you, you cannot taste. You can see it, but you can't taste it. You can't feel it. Well, you can feel it, but you can't, you can feel it and you can see it. Y'all get the point. My point is, is that however you're talking to yourself, what you believe about yourself, I mean, you're going to put some action towards it or not if you don't have that belief of yourself. It is very important that we pay more attention to the things that we are doing within our lives. We are saying to ourselves and what we are saying amongst others. You know how sometimes you can go around other people and you can be like, whew, I'm so glad that I'm out of the house or I'm so glad I'm off around that person and you can go around a person, another person, and you can start, you, you act a total different way than what you act around the other person. But the thing is, you are the one constantly with yourself. So it doesn't matter if you feel like, oh, because I'm not with this person now, I can change my ways and I can do something different. No, because at the end of the day, your energy, your thoughts, how you see yourself, this is what's manifesting all your life experiences. So you cannot play games with yourself. You cannot do that. You can't think you can turn it off and then turn it back on. It is so many levels to understanding how to really manifest in that way that you want to see your life experiences. It's so many levels to this. Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. And another thing, people would say to themselves, I don't know why things are happening within my life. But all you got to do is look at the results. That's all you have to do is look at the results. Because the results, they never lie. And the results is coming from your thinking capability. And I'm going to say it one more time. Thinking is a skill. You have to train yourself to think a certain way. Because if you do not train yourself, you are freely allowing other people to influence your internal world, 
your internal space, your spiritual world, your universe. Your internal world is your universe. And within your universe, this is where you use your imagination to create the life as well as the lifestyle, as well as your self-image, as well as your financial goals. I'm kind of getting sidetracked because I hear a lot of noise. But yes, it's very important, y'all, that y'all really focus upon yourself because this is how results are being manifested within your life. The more you pay attention to the outside world, the less you are paying attention to yourself. I can't stress this enough because people don't understand the seriousness it is of really getting to know who you are, to know those spirits within yourself that are capable of teaching you the things that you need to know in order to create the life that you want. This is the reason I believe why there's so much chaos within the world because you know people are quick to voice their opinions about what other people are not doing right you know how other people are just so evil and how other people are so degrading themselves or, or whatever other people are doing that they don't like but when it comes to themselves they just dismiss all that. Like, hey, oh, I get a pass. You don't, the next person don't get a pass. You, you don't get a pass. But I bet you if you looked into your life right now, you'll be like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm not living the life that I want to live. And it's only because you've been allowing yourself to focus on, to focus on things that are none of your business. It's so much stuff that people be focusing on that I be like, wow, this person right here over here is living their life to their full extent, wherever it may be. But then you look at your life, it's like all you can do is just voice your, you know, your, your negative opinion. We got so many critics. People need to start getting a job and being a dang on critic. Because that's what a lot of people do. They just criticize other people. But when it comes to their lives, they don't even pay that due attention. But like I once said, results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. Because they do. Results never, never, never lie. Even if you don't understand the reason why something is happening, results never lie. It's just a pattern of your daily behavior, a pattern of your daily thinking. That's where results are. And until you understand whatever it is that you're so oblivious to, when it comes to yourself and the things you want and how you creating the things that you're creating within your life, you're going to keep manifesting the same thing until you decide because nothing never changes within anyone's life without their decision without their awareness you guys now is the time to fully embrace those uncertainties and step out on faith and live out your grandest version of yourself now however that may look to you all because this is what i'm doing right now i feel like this is my purpose no i'm not the best at it but no i can't let this stop me from doing what i know that i should be doing and how do i know 
because this keeps me up at night. This is something that helped me change my way of thinking, my way of viewing myself. Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. All right, I want to talk a little bit when this was just a quick snippet. <laughs> Alchemy. Alchemy. Alchemy, I believe, is finding your own way, being aware of your observation throughout your days. I ain't say day, I mean days. Y'all see this? This is my Peculiar Conscious Project uh, logo. Yeah. And the reason why I chose this logo is because you see in the middle, there's a portal. And within that portal, I can go wherever I want to go. That portal has so many dimensions within there. And that's why I, I chose this this logo, this this image for the peculiar conscious project is because it depicts that the sky ain't the limit. Your imagination is. That's what it depicts for me. And if my imagination is the limit, there 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 isn't anything that I can I cannot do. Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. Now, keep in mind that I'm saying this for myself as well, because when I replay this, I will have this to look at and to see, like I said once before, how I need to perfect. And I know perfection is, I told, like I said once before, it's it's a very strong word, but, you know, I just want to be better at what I'm doing so I can be able to convey what I'm trying to say to you guys and y'all be able to understand it without me, you know, stuttering in my words and stuff like that. I wanted this presentation to be as real as I can have it, you know, and with me, you know, giving you guys a, a, a part of me within the presentation, I, I feel like that's, that's as real as I can get. <laughs> because, you know, I know trial and error is necessary when you're exploring the many versions of yourself. And that's what I'm still doing. And it's going to constantly happen, you know, while I remain here on this earth. I'm going to continue to explore and understand who I am as a person and understand what it is that I am to do constantly to get better at what I'm trying to do. Because why? Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. I just said to myself <clears throat> that I was going to make a, a mantra with me speaking those exact words because um, I don't know if y'all know that when you, you speak words, words have, you know, certain frequency. And the more you use those frequencies and vibrations, the more you are creating your reality. And so this is why I said once, that's why repetition is important. That's why they show certain commercials and, you know, they play certain songs over and over again because that's part of the programming. Once something is done repetitiously, it is programming you. And this is very important for you to know because we just, we are so ignorant when it comes to a lot of things 
about ourselves and about this reality that we're in. And that's why I felt like this it was my my place, my position to share amongst you all what it is that I knew. And I know quite a lot to the point sometimes it fucks me up. <laughs> because I I I read things, you know, I read energy rather, and then I you know, I can tell what's good for me and what's not. And I end up a lot of times being by myself because of the energy frequencies and vibrations that I'm picking up. And I don't know if I've mentioned it previously, but I'm going to say it again. Okay, vibrations are your thoughts, right? And the frequency, it would be how you feel about the thoughts that you're having. So feelings is it has a lot to do with what you're manifesting too because if you feel a certain type of way about something it's going to it's going to alter your focus that's what i'm trying to say alter it's going to alter your focus because of the way you feel about it and if you feel when you feel strongly about something you can't stop thinking about it you know what I'm saying? Whether it's something that makes you mad, whether it's something that makes you happy, whatever the case may be, once that emotion, energy in motion starts to kick in, then this is what's going to dictate your frequency. And it also is what's going to Show you what you're about to manifest within your reality based upon those strong emotions that you have about this particular thing. And another thing that I wanted to mention as well is you know how people talk about karma. That has been so misunderstood what karma is. Karma is nothing more than your energy coming back to you and your energy don't have to come back to you by that person that you sent it to it can come back to you through another person it can catch you out guard but your energy still had to come back to you that's karma it's a mirror reflection of your energy coming back to you and when it comes to people People are nothing more than energy. You know, we see color, we see race, we see gender, we see culture, we see all this, but none of that has nothing to do with energy. Energy is so freaking, what it is, it is, it's biased when it comes to or should I say non-biased, not biased, but non-biased when it comes to individuals. Because it doesn't, it doesn't know how, it doesn't understand. Now that those are languages that was man-made. Energy just does what it does. It just reflects. That's what energy does, it reflects. And what is the, the, the key phrase in this presentation? Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. Whatever you are thinking, whatever you are thinking, that is the seed you are sowing. And based upon how much you focus on it, that's what you're going to manifest. So, uh, I'd like for you guys to keep that in mind when it comes to manifesting. Results always tell the truth. Results always tell the truth. Within this, this slide right here, I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about. So... 
I'm just gonna talk and um hopefully not hopefully but my momentum is gonna pick up and then I can go forth with it. But um yeah energy is a very powerful force that is so understood. And the more we have an understanding about it, the more we can understand why we are getting the results that we get in our life. And when we begin to understand what we are sending out to experience within our lives, then we can better think about the things that we truly desire. I know sometimes a lot of people feel like they don't even have the time to sit down and, and write down goals and to examine you know, their lives because being within this matrix, they call it a matrix because it's just the, the, the land of programming. You have no choice but to get programmed if you're living here on this earth. But it's up to you what you allow to program you. It's up to you. It's up to you. But we just so openly to other people's opinion. And it has totally nothing to do with who we are and the things that we're trying to accomplish within our lives. And when we do that, that's why we get so many chaotic experiences within our lives. And we have so much confusion within our lives. And then we begin to become unrecognizable to ourselves because we have allowed so many things to possess us to the point that it becomes normal. You know, being possessed and being a robot or being a clone, it becomes so normal to us because we haven't been properly trained how to think, how to look at ourselves because this world that we live within is nothing more but a self-reflection world. It mirrors back to us <clears throat> what we believe, period. What we believe, it mirrors back to us on a consistent basis, what we believe about ourselves. And that is so important to understand how we are manifesting the results that we are getting within our lives. A lot of us just deny, we deny that we have problems. We deny that we're not sure of what it is that we're supposed to be doing. Because a lot of us believe that the only thing we're here to do is pay bills and work and do it all over again the next day. Pay bills, work, watch TV and eat. Pay bills, watch TV, and eat. But if that's the life that you feel that is for you, uh, by all means, continue to do that. But nothing ever happens without your awareness. <clears throat> whatever you are unaware of, whatever you are denying, you will get more of it. When you lie to yourself, when you're not fully focused on those things that are truly important to you, you will get a wake up call. How it shows up, hey, that's up to the energy you sent out for it to show up. Because we have a lot of negative 
self-talk that we don't even be aware of. And then we start to wondering why certain situations happen to us because we, we're not aware that we're supposed to be aware of the conversations that we're having with ourselves, of the conversations that we're having amongst others. We're not even aware of this. And this is, this is very important to me for y'all to understand these things. Because, you know, back in my younger days, not that I'm old, but I'm saying like my teenage years, man, I reached so many uh, abusive relationships and Oh my God, I can't even, oof, it, it's just so many things that I didn't know about myself. And then when I sit here and I recall some of those conversations that I used to have with myself, now I, I know why. I know why now. I didn't know. I didn't know that I could dream. I didn't know that I could I could have a life outside of being a mother. I didn't know this. I thought that's what my life was all about. It's just being a mother and loving my children, which I'm not saying that that's not important because that's still important to me. It's even more important to me now with me knowing the things that I know. But I just wanted to share this. Like I said in the beginning, I didn't know what I was going to talk about, but I just wanted to do a little free-flowing, you know, just let some things just flow however it may. But yeah, you guys, understanding how the inner workings of your thinking works is very important. And another thing, I, you know, once I, I do this presentation, I will be doing another one and another one. And I might just still use this, uh, these, these slides to better convey what I was trying to say on this one, on the next one. Because, like I said, I know I'm not the best at speaking because I get so caught up in my head. I'll be trying to find the words. But I'm a great channeler when it comes to me going within and me having a conversation within myself. Now, when it comes to outside, it, it, it becomes very hard because I'm always, you know, constantly to myself. And also, I'm just sharing this with you guys. I, I know it's, it's way off topic or whatever, but I know these things about myself. But I would never, ever allow that to stop me from being the best that I can be. And whatever, you know, challenges you have or uncertainties that you have, you should never allow them to stop you as well. Because this whole experience, this whole life experience that we're having, all it is is just something for you to construct the way you want to construct it. I mean, I know a lot of this stuff I'm saying is for a bitch, but if you just take some time and you sit with yourself and you really go within, your inner guidance will allow you to know things, but it takes training for you to do this, though. It will allow you to know things that you didn't even know you knew. Because we were first spiritual. And I know it may seem like I'm regurgitating things, but I'm not. Because I have experienced a lot of stuff and I didn't I couldn't put a word to it because I don't think I was that you know well advanced, you know, in the knowledge that I am now at that time that I, I was going through that experience. I wasn't. But I knew I'd experienced it. And I didn't know how to explain it to nobody else. I know, I'm like, if I try to tell this to somebody, they're going to think my head is crazy. I need to be locked up somewhere, you know, in a straitjacket. 
So it's a lot of stuff that I went through that I can't even, you know, share it with others because, you know, all they was going to say is, oh, the devil this, or either the, you know, Jesus that. And I, you know, no. Mm -mm. So I kept a lot of stuff to myself. And that's when I started getting better and better at channeling through my writings because I started to take notice of that. Like, a lot of the things that I was saying within my writings that I wasn't even aware of who was saying it because I know the way I speak and I know the way that I think. And so a lot of times when I wanted to get a lot of information that I needed, all I had to do was start to write. But anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to hold y'all in this presentation because it's the longest one and I'm just free flowing, which I'm free flowing on all of them. But it's like I had a, a set topic that I wanted to talk about with the others. But uh, I just wanted to leave you with that, that your energy always has to come back to you based upon what you sent out, even if you are ignorant to how this whole manifesting law of attraction, universal laws, even if you don't even understand how it works, it still has to come back to you. And then I know a lot of y'all wonder, if you know all this, why you have the life that you live. And the reason being is because of my focus. Oh, I'm about to start crying. My focus be, you know, it be all over the place. And so that's another thing, too. When you're doing a lot of manifesting work, you your focus has to be like real laser sharp. It has to be so laser sharp to the point that nothing can come between what you're doing. And I do mean nothing. Nothing. And that's why, you know, my life is the way it is because I know at times I, I, I allow things to hinder my focus so that's what i'm that's all i'm gonna say about that you know i'll be needing days a lot of times to really get myself in this space that and i'm not talking about you know that space that 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 dream world you know that space that i say that i want to get to i'm talking about just to this space alone so i can just Recenter myself, refocus myself. Because when you go out there within the world, you're picking up on so many energies. Get along with all the confusion and all, you know, all the, you know, if you have people standing in your, your household, you're picking up on their energy too. But my thing be, I be needing a couple of days so I can release those energies that don't belong to me. Because if you don't release them, they will grab, they will become within your subconscious mind. And the things that happen within the subconscious mind, it's subliminal. You really don't notice it. That's why it takes really a lot of training and practicing for you to understand what be going on, which I know this. I know this, but I don't, I, 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 that's why I be talking about my space, my space. My space will be just me alone in that space. But I, I'm not going to continue to, to go on. I'm going to stop this. But I hope y'all get the point about energies and stuff like that. I just love talking about this because it's just so amazing how, you know, the spiritual world, the unseen world, your thoughts is, is the author of so many of your experiences. It's just amazing to me. It is. But that's how it works. But it's this knowledge, this teaching, it goes above so many people's heads. They don't want to fuck with it. They look at this like black magic or some, some devilish shit, which they should. That's why I made that video that I made, Evil is Good, because 
your thoughts is your power. Your thoughts, your thinking is your power. And however you choose to express it, it may not, you know, be the, the, the coolest, the trending thing at that time. So it will be called evil or the devil. In 1990, Joe Walker wrote a book, it's called Paradise. He said, to be able to shape your future, you have to be willing and able to change your paradigm. When I discovered what a paradigm was, it was back in 2016. Do any of you know what a paradigm is? How about this? Do any of you understand how the mind works? Because the paradigm has something to do with the mind. At this time, I would like to introduce to you guys an idea. And what I'm going to show you is without question, the most powerful idea I've ever learned. But here's the thing, if you don't catch on to this idea, the odds of you making great changes will be very, very slim. I want you to look at the mind and then look at paradigm. But we're going to personalize it. We'll be looking at your mind and your paradigm. Okay, let's make this drawing a representation of your mind. There's the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the body. Now, the conscious mind is the thinking mind. Let me ask you something. Did you know that the average person does not think? Do you know that a lot of people confuse mental activity with thinking and that's not thinking at all if you were to listen to what most people are saying they would never say the things that they are saying watch their behavior they'll never do what they were doing if they were thinking at this moment i would like to share with you guys something that dr lawrence rampel said back in 1981 he said, thinking is a skill which can be learned just as we learn skills such as typing and playing the piano. Few public schools offer courses devoted expressly to teaching thinking. Rather, we are expected to learn and teach thinking as a byproduct of learning mathematics, reading, history, science, and a trade, and so forth. Yet we do learn a lot about thinking in that way. The trouble is we learn our thinking skills in bits and pieces, and we never put it together as an overall picture. If asked to describe what's required in order to think effectively, most of us would be at loss to give a complete account. Thus, we are unable, unable to assess our own thinking skills or systematically teach the skills of thinking to others. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I know I mentioned it earlier that thinking was a skill. We have to train ourselves to think. And the only way that we can train ourselves to think is to really know who we are. And when we know who we are, you know, we can distinguish, you know, other people's ideals that are influencing us based upon what we know about ourselves. But back to the matter at hand. Now we're going to be talking about um the conscious mind. Well, it's with your conscious mind, you think. This is also what we call the educated mind. This is where our intellect is resident. And it is the intellectual factors that give you the ability to be the creative ability. As the Bible says, we are created in God's image, right? Right. Well, that's where the creative faculties comes in. 
In our intellectual facu faculties, you have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, and intuitive abilities. All right, here we dive a little deeper into what's going on, what be going on into the subconscious mind. But before we go into what happens within the subconscious mind, let me elaborate a little deeper on the conscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind is quite different from the conscious mind. That's what we call the emotional mind. See, the conscious mind can think so, therefore, you have the ability to choose. You can literally choose wherever you want to go in your life. But the thing is, people cho make choices based upon their up unconscious. But guess what? It's still a choice. But you do have the ability here to accept or reject information within the conscious mind. You can accept or reject. When we see something come on the news about the economy, you can say to yourself, that may be happening for them, but it's not going to happen for me. You got the ability to reject information. Somebody might start to tell you, uh, you know, a, a sad story or something that you, you just don't want to listen to. You can reject it. You know, you, you have to... Uh, the choice of rejecting something or, uh, or accepting something within your conscious mind. Okay, at this moment, you have the ability to accept or reject in your conscious mind. I'm going to say I said in this moment because a lot of people, you know, when you watch stuff on TV and stuff like that, when you see stuff outside, you have the ability to accept or reject. But a lot of people, they will stare at it. They will, you know, get emotional about it because, you know, yeah, be like, I can't believe this happened. But anyway, it's still up to you. Whenever you give your observation towards something, that's you right there saying that, oh, okay, I want to look at this. I want to process it. You know, I want to analyze it. But you do have a choice. You do not have to do that. You are the one accepting stuff based upon your observation. You can turn away from it. Or you can, I keep saying this over and over again because you remember what I said earlier about repetition. To make sure the subconscious mind can understand what I am telling you. Now, your subconscious mind has no ability to reject it. It must itself. Now, check this out. Whatever is placed in your subconscious mind is going to di dictate your reality, how you manifest and things into your reality. When something is placed within your subconscious mind, it does determine how you are going to make your decision. So that's why you have to be careful about what you observe and what you allow to program you. And your imagination or your subconscious mind cannot be differentiate between what you imagine and what is real. So if you imagine if you imagine something happen and you get emotionally involved, it actually starts to happen. Y'all don't know like if you sit there and think about something that happened in your childhood right now within this moment, and it was something that's so traumatizing to you, it will bring up some type of emotion right now. Even though it happened 10 or 12 years ago, or maybe 30 years ago, or however many years ago, it will make, you know, if you think about it, it's going to feel like it's happening right now. You might even begin to cry because that way, that is what happens when you do that. The subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between the present, the past, or the future. The subconscious mind can't, but the conscious mind can All right, I've just given you guys the basics about the mind. Now let's look at this. This is you today. Yes, we have here the reasoning mind, which equals the conscious mind, which means to think. When you have your conscious mind, that means you can analyze things in order for you to, I would say that to decipher. Because when you're dealing with this outer realm, the external realm, you are dealing with some tricky shit. <laughs> I'm going to let you know that now. It's the, uh, a lot of magicians are out there just pulling the veil over a lot of people's eyes. But let me get back to the thing. All right. Today we are being bombarded with information in your country's mind from radio, from other people, from TV and social media. But guess what? You have the ability to say no. You want to know why? Because you have a reasoning factor. You have the ability to think and you can say, I don't need that information and I'm not accepting that.
But guess what, y'all? We don't do that. We don't reject. We accept any and everything that comes our way that supposedly supposed to be some information that we can use. And we just think we can use all the information, but that's not true because it's a lot of information and a lot of things that we allow our mind and subconscious mind to get a hold to that really be doing some internal damage to us emotionally. I am here to tell everyone right now, we do have a choice. We do not have to entertain any of those ideas that are being thrown upon us each and every day. <clears throat> because when we leave our minds wide open, and remember what I said about the subconscious mind, it has no ability to reject. It must accept. Why do you think we just allow any and everything to program us to and to influence us? Why y'all think we do that? Well, this is because this is how we've been already programmed. Yep, we've been programmed to think that we need all types of information in order for us to, you know, what they call be informed about what's going on in the world. That's what they say. Oh, we, you need this information. If you don't get the information, then you're gonna be misinformed, or you're not gonna you're not gonna know what's going on in the world. But guess what, y'all? That's how I live my life. I don't watch news. I don't listen to anybody else. It's got to be something very entertaining and something humorous for me to want to look at it. But if it's something down and low vibe and um information, I stay away from that. Because I know I can choose what I allow myself to pay attention to, you know, because these things does affect us internally. It affects how we, you know, our mood be throughout our day, all day. But as y'all can see, when we allow things to enter our minds and program us, this is our paradigm. Can somebody tell me how this happened? I mean, seriously, tell me how is it that we just go around just willingly just allowing people to influence us and control our lives? Because whatever influences us is controlling our life, whether we are conscious about it or unconscious about it. And this is what we did. We just leave our subconscious mind wide open for any and everything to come in and just use us at their will. Use us however they see fit to use us. And we be so oblivious to it to the point that we just freely want to do it. We, we freely do it. And the plot thickens, ladies and gentlemen. Are y'all still with me? Because I know that this information is worth a whole lot of attention. Don't you guys think so? Why? Because... This idea is worth millions to you because it can cause you to live in a more healthier body. It can cause you to build your own business as well as cause you to actually think for yourself and stop allowing us to use it as their puppet. Yes, I said it. Let's start thanking you guys on a serious tip though. Let's start thinking. And oh, it's something else I would like to bring to you guys' attention. You see this chart right here? Well, say you today got your subconscious mind, your body, radio, other people, TV, social media, and that right there to the right, where it says you as the infant. What's going on here? So, with this chart, what I'm going to be explaining to you is that this is you as an infant, but not today. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I'm not saying that y'all have like immature minds or whatever, but we'll probably get to that part. But what I'm saying is this is you as an actual infant, like, you know, from the day you was born. Infant. Okay. And whatever that is happening around you goes 
right into your subconscious mind and it just keep going in over and over and over again see you're pro you, you have been programmed genetically that's why you look so much like your relatives there's a little particle of energy from your mom and there's a little particle of energy from your dad which came together and that was the nucleus of you and 280 days later you made your debut on the planet but you have all that dna of your mom and your dad going back towards many generations you were genetically programmed so that's where a lot of your ideas come from based upon generation of grandma great grandma stuff like that but anyway it's just been passed down you know a lot of our thinking has been passed down based upon you know out of genetics so just like i just said many of your beliefs has been passed down from one generation to the next and guess what y'all many of these ideas that we have you know just willing to willingly accept it a lot of them are ridiculous which leads me to my next point I think we all know um, what a self image is. A self image is something that you created yourself. A self image is how you accumulated a lot of ideas. You know, you had a lot of experience and now you're fully able to you know make a assessment of what it is that you would like to be and experience you know in your adulthood that's a self-image but see the thing is as you can see with the self-image we have you today the radio other people tv social media and you as an infant so in the middle we have your self-image you see, we have all these things, you know, they are auditioning for your attention. The things you did as a child, you know, the social media, TV, other people, radio, and then you as, as the person that you are being or you want to become. All these things are auditioning in your conscious mind as well as your subconscious mind but see the thing is your self-image was formed when you wasn't even fully capable of using your conscious mind all that happened when you didn't even have the ability to think for yourself so in actuality whoever you think you are it was formed out of you unconsciously believing what others said about you you freely and willingly allowing you know life circumstances and stuff like that things of your childhood to dictate who you believe you are this day that's how your self-image was formed you didn't create it yourself you didn't say okay I've experienced, I've seen, I've did this, I've did that. Now I can fully make an assessment of what it is that I want to be throughout the remainder of my life. You didn't do that. You just made a judgment based on what other people said and your past experience. And that's not how you 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 um, create your self-image. You really have to know who you are in order to create that self-image. now self-image is just one idea a multitude of ideas now that's what's creating your paradigm look at the people you're surrounded by that alone is a multitude of ideas that's waiting to influence your subconscious mind 
Okay, let's look at this quote by Robert Hinlin, shall we? He said that in absence of clearly defined goals, we become strangely loyal to performing daily tributes until we ultimately become enslaved by it. Now think about that. He said in the absence of clearly defined goals, we become strangely, strangely loyal to performing daily trivial until we ultimately become enslaved by it. Why? Well, because that's probably what we've seen the people do that we were surrounded by as kids. Okay, now check this out, y'all. Now, if who we are surrounded by as a kid is, you know, constructing our paradigm, what do you think this is doing to our self-image? And a paradigm is nothing but a multitude of ideals that's going within your subconscious mind over and over and over and over again. So, you see, this is how your self-image got created. It got created through you observing other people, through, you know, going through experience and, you know, just unconsciously. I say you, a lot of people unconsciously did things because they don't know how to think. So, unconsciously, you constructed your self-image based upon a paradigm that you didn't create yourself. Meaning, you created it, but you unconsciously created it because you believed that it was the right way of thinking. It was the right way of behaving. It was the right way of, you know, living your life, which you wasn't living your life. You were just living the life of what somebody else taught you or told you that was good for you to live. But moving on, going more into the paradigm. Any idea that keeps going in over and over and over and over again, this is what forms your paradigm. As I said previously, Repetition is what causes a paradigm. Anything you do habitually, it's going to form a paradigm. And the paradigm is things that you are constantly doing without really have to consciously think of doing. It's just going to automatically do it. You know, kind of like when you learn how to ride a bike or if you learn how to drive a car or, you know, how they say when you're driving a car and you know how to you know, not be so uptight and just be able to mess with the radio, talk on your cell phone and stuff like that. That's because you have mastered how to drive the car. Now you can unconsciously do things like take your hand off the wheel and stuff like that and focus on other things instead of just focusing directly on the road. But yeah. And so a paradigm is nothing more but a multitude of ideas that are fixed in the subconscious mind. And so here we are, as hard as it may seem, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years later, living exactly the same as we were programmed when we were little kids. Wow. All right, you guys, you probably got about five, ten more minutes in this presentation that we'll be doing. With that said, let's go to school, shall we? What does school do? Well, school gives us valuable knowledge. <clears throat> That's what it does. It gives us valuable knowledge, but if we are not capable of using our conscious mind and able to think for ourselves, then school, it doesn't serve a purpose for us. All school has done for us is it has programmed us to it has programmed us to regurgitate useless knowledge that we don't even need in our lives. So, 
who it served its purpose for as for as far as getting us, you know, ready for you know reading and writing and math and things of that sort. But as for as for as actually giving us knowledge that we can use in order to successfully, you know, enhance our self-image, school was not for that purpose. It was only to program us for their agenda. Now think for a moment, superior knowledge versus inferior results. Hmm. You see, you guys, inferior results causes confusion and frustration. So that's why we have a lot of people out here that's always stressed confused, don't know what to do because of their paradigm. Their paradigm has been controlling everything within their life. Unconsciously now, because the paradigm is what's been constructed unconsciously within the subconscious mind. So this is why it's so much confusion out here. Now think about this for a moment. We got all this great knowledge, but we know nothing about what a paradigm is. All right, y'all, here go that gruff again. Inside of your country's mind, that's all of the knowledge you got in school. Y'all see that? Yeah, we, we told them right, all this knowledge in our country's mind. But we got a lot of it to the point that it's, it's just jam-packed in our brain. But guess what, y'all? It doesn't equate to the results we're getting. To conclude this presentation, I'm going to leave on this note. You have to understand how to use your mind and stop allowing it to use you. If you really want to change the results you're getting, there's something you must do. You got to know how to change your paradigm. And if you don't change your paradigm, I don't care what you do. Nothing is ever going to happen. Even if you attempt to go back to school, nothing still isn't going to change. You know why? Because you're not short on knowledge. You're shut on behavior pattern. And this is how you get the result you are wanting. Even the one-celled amoeba in the ocean, every point of consciousness is having exposure to experience in which personal preferences are being born. 
And when some consciousness, whether it is the genius human that is you or a cell in your body, when that consciousness is having exposure to experience and is personally discerning that this would be slightly better than this, source always agrees. Do you understand that this is what is the evolution of all that we are? That's why you're on the leading edge of thought. You're out here in the nitty gritty of this time space reality, having exposure to experiences that let the genius of your particular focus give birth to a new preference that source then follows. So when you ask, it is always given. When that desire or preference, whatever you want to call it, is born within you, you send a vibrational rocket, which source becomes one with immediately. That is an important thing to understand as you begin to pay attention to your guidance system, which is going to show you the vibrational relativity between one point and another. Now hear this, you're really going to like this. So here you are moving through the contrast of your life experience. And we don't mean horrible things and wonderful things. We mean variety of things. Some of them wanted and some of them not wanted, but contrast of your time and place. So out of that contrast is born a rocket of desire and another and another and another and another.